All right, everyone, welcome back to another beginner's JavaScript practice video. I have a bunch of other videos in this series. So if you want to kind of practice your JavaScript knowledge, I definitely recommend that you check out all of the videos in the series. But what I'm going to be showing you in this video is how to create a grade converter. So a user can come in and type in like 95 and click convert, and that'll print out your letter grade. So this says your letter grade is A. If I do like 75, that should be C. And I could do like 85, and that should be B. And if you are a beginner, I would definitely recommend pausing this video and trying this to trying to build this for yourself. Um, that's the best way that you can learn how to do this like lower level logic in JavaScript. And then once you've tried for yourself, if you get stuck, then unpause this video and try to watch through it. But we are going to be covering a couple of cool things in this video, such as a Boolean a logic, if statements, if else statements, and also how to read and write from the DOM. So Definitely stick around if this is something that would be interesting to you. And also press that subscribe button if you're new to this channel because I have a lot of other videos like this that will help you become a better JavaScript developer and web developer. All right, let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so let's just go ahead and build out an index file. So if you do exclamation mark enter, that should scaffold out an index file in VS Code. And I'm going to go ahead and change the title to Grade Converter. And if you do that successfully, you should see up in the top the title changes to Grade Converter. So the first step of this little um, program is obviously you need a way for a user to input some type of value. So I'm gonna do an input element, so just an input tag. And then I'm gonna go ahead and in that input element, I'm gonna give it an ID of, I don't know, I'll say numeric grade. And so if you save that, you'll see that an input shows up to the right here. You can kind of zoom in a little bit. I'm also going to open up my dev tools because we're going to have to do some console logging in a second to verify this is working. So the next thing that you kind of need is you need a button so that the user knows when they can submit the value. So I'm going to go ahead and add another element called button. And the button tag is a little bit different. Inside the button, you can actually nest some text. So you usually have like an opening um, tag and a closing tag inside of the button. I can actually say like convert. And that'll have the button show up and have convert inside the text. So now we actually have a place for the user to input something and convert it, but we don't actually run any code when that happens. So let's just go ahead and add a script section here. So I'm going to say script. So I'm going to put that right before the ending tag of body because if you put that before your actual DOM elements, you're not going to be able to find them when you do document.getElement by ID. So inside of the script tag, this is how you can run some JavaScript. What we need to do is we need to basically make a function so that when we click convert, it's going to call some JavaScript code. So one way you can do that is on the button itself, you can do an on click attribute. And inside of that um, value of the attribute, you can call a function. So I'm just going to go ahead and call a function called convert, which we haven't created yet. So we need to go down here and say function convert to make a new function that takes in a zero arguments. And this is going to run some code. So I'm just going to say console.log we are here. And the reason I do this is I just want to verify that when I actually click this button, we do actually get some type of logic running behind the scenes. And we do, we see the console log, so we know everything is working fine. By the way, there's other ways that you can actually bind event listeners to DOM elements. You could actually do like an add event listener down here in your script tag. I just like doing it this way because it's a little bit easier for a beginner in my opinion, especially since most big frameworks like React, Vue, and Angular you'll see that they have on the DOM element itself, they usually have some type of event listener firing a function. So this is very similar to how we do it in React. So I would like to teach it this way. But there are some downsides to doing inline functions. Just keep that in mind. So if you think to yourself for a, lo a little bit, what do we need to do next? Well, we have an input box, but we don't know what the value is. So we need to somehow get the value so that in code, we can check the value and kind of run it through some if statements to convert it to a letter grade. So in the code, we actually need to get a reference to the input DOM element here. And one way you can do that is you can simply say const um, numeric grade is equal to document.getElement by ID. So what this is doing is when you load JavaScript in the browser, there is a global object called document. And that document object has a ton of helper methods on it, right? So getElementID is one of those methods. But in fact, if you were to console log this out, so if you print out the document, you'll notice that it has a ton of different like properties on it. Some of these properties are actually functions and other things. So a lot of these things on the document you'll probably never interact with. 
but there are a couple of useful ones that you need to kind of understand. And one of them is get document by ID or get element by ID. So, so when you call document .get element by ID, it's actually going to give you a reference to this DOM element. And then you can actually do things with this, such as get the value that the user typed in. So let's try it down here. We actually want to get the value. So I'm going to say const numeric is equal to document or numeric grade dot value. Value happens to be a property that exists when you're dealing with inputs. And just to make sure this works, I'm going to go ahead and print this out. So let's just go ahead and console log that too. I'll type in a number, click convert. And you notice it prints out we are here 23. So now we actually know how to get the value that the user typed in and we can do some computation with it. But before we dive down further into the implementation, I want to show you something. When you grab values from text input boxes, they are going to be of type strings. So if I print out the type of this variable, you'll notice that it prints out string. Okay, so if you wanted to do some type of comparison, like an if statement, say if this is greater than 100 or if this is greater than 50, this isn't going to work because now we're dealing with strings. So what you want to do is you want to convert this value to a integer or a number, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to say parse int, which is another global function that's available to you. And you can pass it a string, which happens to be like a number. And JavaScript is going to convert that to a number type. So if I run this again, type in a value up here, let me delete that, click convert, you'll see that we are here and now printed out number. So we need number when we're dealing with computations or like if statements that deal with less than or greater than. So just keep that in mind. This is like an important gotcha that sometimes trips me up. All right, so now let's move on to the fun part. The fun part is, we need to take this numeric grade and we need to convert it to a letter grade. Okay, so if you're familiar with conditional logic in if statements and if else statements, this will be pretty easy, but let's just kind of give you an overview. So if you were to do this on paper, if you have a letter grade, let's say that's 95, how do you determine if that's an A, B, C, D, or F? Well, really all you have to do is say, if this is greater than or equal to 90, you know it's an A. If it's not greater than or equal to 90, you know that it has to be either B, C, D, or F, right? So you can kind of keep going down the list and just break early if you find a value that happens to match your letter grade or vice versa. So I'm saying if numeric is greater than or equal to 90, then we know that we got a grade, um, which we could kind of cache up here. So I'm going to say let grade is equal to NA. I'm just gonna set it equal to an empty like string. Like, you know, I'll just set an empty string right now. I'll just do this. I'm just making a variable that we can change. And as we loop through this if statement, we're gonna set it to what we want. So I'm gonna say grade is equal to A in this case. So hopefully this makes sense. This is just an if statement. The syntax is you have if followed by parentheses and inside the parentheses, you have an expression that does some type of Boolean logic, right? So if the number that we, the user typed in is greater than or equal to 90, then we need to set a variable of grade to the letter A. All right, so another cool thing you can do in if statements, you can add else ifs to them. So if the first one does not pass, it's gonna fall down the waterfall and basically check the next one. So I'm gonna say if numeric is greater than or equal to 80, then grade has to be B, right? So if it wasn't A, it has to be either B, C, D, or E. Um, and then we could just check if it's greater than or equal to 80, it must be B. And we kind of just go down the list, right? We just keep doing this for all the different grades. So 70 would be a C. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one again. We could do 60 would be a D. And then else, we probably are an F, right? So this is a good practice with if else statements. And just in general, like how conditional logic works, it just falls down the list, checks each one, one by one. And then finally, if none of these pass, it's gonna basically set grade to F. Let's just go ahead and print this out, but then later on we can actually display it to the screen. So let's type in like um, 75, that should be a C, and that printed out C here. So let's just go ahead and go down and make sure everything works. I do 65, it's a D, 55 is an F, 85 should be a B, and uh, 95 should be an A. All right, so we just verified our logic is working fine. Um, I probably should have done this in order. It would have made more sense, but it's working. We got all the letters printed out for the numbers that we typed in. Now the last step is how do we display that to the page, right? It'd be cool if we let the user know like what their actual what their actual letter grade is. So let's just go here and let's add like an H3 just so we can display that grade somewhere. And inside the H3, I'm going to go ahead and just put an ID called like uh, grade display. 
Okay, so very similar to how we got the input here. I'm going to go ahead and just say const gray display is equal to document dot get element by ID. And I'm going to pass it that ID that we just attached to that H3. And once you've done that, you could simply just grab that DOM element and we want to change what's typed in here, right? So this happens to be, there's two ways to kind of modify what's in here. You can do inner HTML or you can do inner text. In our case, we're just going to do inner text because we're going to keep it simple. So I can get that gray display element that we just grabbed from the DOM. And then I can say dot inner text is equal to, and I'm going to do um, back ticks in JavaScript. You can actually do these back ticks and it allows you to do some type of string interpolation. So I'm going to say your letter grade is. Now here's the cool part. You can do a money sign with curly braces and I can type in the actual variable I want to print out. And really what this is doing is taking a string and replacing this part of the string with a variable value. So this should print out A, B, C, D, or E. Let's just go ahead and run this and make sure this works. I'm going to do like 95 and it says your letter grade is A. Do 55 and it goes to F. So that's about it. I mean, uh, there's probably other ways that we could do this, but this is basically the generic way that you can do a grade converter. I would definitely recommend challenging yourself and try to make this more um, generic. Like one challenge you could do is what if the grade system isn't like 90, 80, 70, 60? What if it actually has a multiple different grades and uh, someone needs to dynamically change that over the years, right? So I would recommend trying to challenge yourself with converting these hard-coded 90, 80, 70, 60 to actually live in a an array somewhere and you can loop over that array and check grades that way. I think it'd be good good practice for you all. Cool. Well, if you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up because it helps my channel grow. And also be sure to leave me a comment if you have another idea of what I could build with using vanilla JavaScript and kind of something basic that would help you learn more about JavaScript. And like always, if you're new to this channel, press that subscribe button because I'm going to have other videos like this that should hopefully help you learn JavaScript better and become a better web developer. Cool. Thanks for watching and happy coding.